Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to explain how to find what type of genetic disorder by analyzing a pedigree and we also have a second question about uh, bark bodies and uh, the first question would be uh, we have to analyze this pedigree and choose the correct answer here on the right. If you need the time you may stop video here uh, try to choose the correct answer and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So uh, what we are going to start with uh, just look at this uh, pedigree and you would be able to notice that uh, here we have uh, in each generation people who would be affected. So we don't see any uh, skip of uh, generation when uh, some generation may not have uh, this genetic disorder then it reappear and uh, that give us a clue that this is dominant genetic disorder so we can cross out all the recessive genetic uh, disorders all the answers that is recessive so this is uh, it cannot be autosomal recessive it cannot be X link recessive and um, because uh, as you see if this is going to be autosomal recessive and this person one would be homozygous recessive his genotype would be small a small a and we assume that this is going to be homozygous normal person then uh, genotype would be capital A capital A and all 100% of the progeny uh, would be heterozygous and uh, that means that 100% uh, of the progeny phenotypically would be normal and would be carriers but we see here that 50% um, of the children are affected with this genetic disorder so this cannot be autosomal recessive and uh, it also cannot be X-link recessive because when we have uh, X-link recessive genetic disorder uh, males would be affected and females would be carriers. 50% of the females would be carriers and 50% of males would be affected. For example we see here male who is affected and imagine that his genotype would be, uh, if it is X-link recessive genetic disorder, then his genotype would be uh, defective X chromosome, normal Y chromosome, and female would be phenotypically and genotypically normal, so would have two normal X chromosomes. And as you see, this male would be uh, affected because he has only one X chromosome and even those this genetic disorder recessive because he has only one X chromosome he doesn't have another normal X chromosome with normal um, gene on it then uh, this means that this person would be affected but here as you see all his daughters who is going to get X chromosome from him would be uh, phenotypically normal they would be uh, carers and 100% uh, of the males would be phenotypically and genotypically normal because they would get X chromosome from the mother and they would get Y chromosome from the father so as you see uh, here uh, all females would be phenotypically normal but when we look at our pedigree, we see that this male has three uh, affected daughters. So it cannot be an uh, X-link recessive genetic disorder. So we also cross out this possibility. Now let's consider answer A, Y-linked. And uh, imagine that here we have genotype of the male and we have uh, defective Y chromosome 
with defective gene on it and we have phenotypically normal uh, female so what uh, distribution we would see in the progeny and here we would have phenotypically and genotypically normal female here we also would see phenotypically and genotypically normal female so 100% of the female progeny would be phenotypically and genotypically normal once again as we see uh, all the daughters here are affected but uh, all the males who is going to get X chromosome from the mother side and Y chromosome from the father side would be affected just like their father and we see that um, here we have a son the mutual son who is not affected so we also cross out this uh, possibility now two answers left would you be able to choose between B and D so let's consider answer D autosomal dominant and uh, this time we would have two uh, alleles allele A capital and allele A small and normal allele would be uh, this small allele you probably get used that uh, recessive allele usually means uh, that this is defective allele but uh, you write most of the genetic disorders uh, more than probably 99% would be uh, recessive genetic disorders but small percentage of the genetic disorders are dominant so we use this uh, capital letter for this genetic disorder for allele uh, for this genetic disorder I don't use XX and XY chromosomes for this example because uh, this is autosomal and we call uh, all the chromosomes autosomal uh, all of them except uh, two sex chromosomes X and Y chromosomes so uh, that means that this uh, genotype would be uh, would stand for this person and uh, this person would be phenotypically normal and genotypically normal and this means that uh, this female would have two uh, small a alleles so now when we build a Punnett square we, we can predict genotypes of the progeny here we would have capital A small a capital A small a small a small a and small a small a so as you see 50% of the progeny uh, as this can be any sex would be affected both males and females alike and 50% would be phenotypically and genotypically normal so let's take a look at the distribution of this uh, genetic disorder so here we have male and uh, this couple has one two three four five children and uh, one two three of these five children are females and all females are affected but none of the males are affected now let's take a close look at the third generation is if there are any peculiarities about uh, distribution and here we see that uh, female who is affected has both males and females who is also affected and here we see that this female have affected son this female has affected daughter and son and let's now uh, consider uh, generation 4 and we see that uh, this male has only daughters who is affected but not the son and this uh, male also who is affected has daughters who is affected but, but none of his sons so this is uh, 
very strange. Female can uh, give uh, this genetic disorder to both males and females. And uh, males only can give this genetic disorder to females. So this doesn't look like this picture where a genetic disorder would be distributed between the progeny equally between uh, females and males. So we can cross out uh, this variant also. This is not autosomal dominant as you see. And now let's consider what we would see if we build a Punnett square for X-linked dominant genetic disorder. So here we have affected male and this means that uh, his genotype would be XY and his uh, X chromosome would have defective uh, allele on the X chromosome and uh, his wife as you see phenotypically and genotypically normal so we would use two normal X chromosomes for her genotype. So when we build a Punnett square we would be able to see uh, what genotypes of the progeny would be and here we see that uh, this male would give to all his daughters uh, his only defective X chromosome so 100% of his daughters would be affected, but 100% uh, of the males would be not affected. And this is exactly what we see in the first generation. So this is first generation result of their mating. And we see that 100% of the daughters are affected. And we see that none of the males are affected. All the males are uh, phenotypically and genotypically normal because they got uh, the X chromosome from their mother who is genotypically and phenotypically normal. But picture would be different at the third generation because the mothers, so uh, person number two, number four and number eight, the genotype would be uh, heterozygous and one of the X chromosome would be with a defective allele. Let's take for example this couple. So we know that genotype of the female would be one defective X chromosome and one normal chromosome and genotype of the male would be normal so he would have one normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. And when we build the Punnett square, we would see that result of such cross would be that here we would have a defective X chromosome and normal chromosome from the father side. And here we would have two normal X chromosomes and defective X chromosome here from the mother side normal Y chromosome from the father side and normal X chromosome from the mother side and normal chromosome Y chromosome from the father side. So once again 50% of the progeny would be affected but as you see 50% of the females would be normal, 50% of the females would be affected, 50% of the males would be affected and 50% of the males would be unaffected. And this is exactly what we see in the third generation. So for example this couple uh, have a male who is affected, male who is not affected, female who is affected and female who is not affected. Exactly what we see here. So our correct answer would be answer B. And all of the following generations are uh, following this uh, pattern. And next question, the number of barred bodies that XXX human female should have. And uh, this is very easy question. Uh, females has two X chromosomes and uh, males has 
one X chromosome and Y chromosome and uh, in order to balance number of chromosomes in females one of the chromosomes would be deactivated so both males and females have uh, one active X chromosome those uh, females has two X chromosomes and uh, males has only one but both of them would have only one active X chromosome because males doesn't make uh, bar bodies because this is the only one X chromosome that has uh, more than 2000 genes that is needed for normal body function but uh, females would make one bar body in the process that we call X chromosome dosage compensation and whenever for example female would have one extra chromosome this chromosome also would be deactivated so a female who is going to have three X chromosome still would have only one chromosome active and would have two bar bodies so our answer here is that uh, this female would have two bar bodies and by the way uh, males also can have a genotype for example X X Y due to non-disjunction during meiosis on the male or female side and such male also would make one bar body so uh, if male would be XXY genotype he also would have one bar body in every his cell and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video Please write your comments, questions if you have any and see you in the next video. Goodbye.